Hello and welcome to another Writerly Witterings with me, Michael Jex, the, well, non-drinking author. <clears throat> I'm a non-drinking author tonight because it's now just gone ten past midnight. So profuse apologies for a video that's going to be a little bit lighter than usual, owing to the fact that I've got to get this recorded and edited before I go to bed and then make sure it goes live tomorrow on Thursday when it's supposed to. Why am I so late? Well, I'll give you a quick rundown. I have just spent, I think, a grand total of six hours copying and pasting 1,300 names and email addresses from a long list into a file that I can now use to send out newsletters. <clears throat> because what happened was, when I changed websites, I designed my own one, the main objective really was to get people's email addresses so that I could send them out every quarter or so a little update on what was happening. Not the same as Patreon, not the same as YouTube, but just a way of keeping in touch with people who like my books. It seemed like a fairly basic and straightforward concept, really. It's amazing how difficult the most simple requirements are. I started this as a process about 18 months ago. I haven't sent out a newsletter in all that time, and I've just got fed up with trying to find quick and easy fixes for things, only to discover that really there isn't one. So I thought, take the bull by the horns, damn it. I'll just copy and paste the whole damn lot from the old CSV file straight into the new file. And I've just finished at midnight. So hopefully, all of those of you who are interested, and if you're not, why aren't you? Um, there is going to be a newsletter going out probably this weekend, roughly the same time as I do the next Patreon uh, information pieces. And hopefully there will be lots in there of interest to people who are interested in me, my books, my writing, and whatever's going to be going on in the weird and wonderful world of the Jex website coming up. But I have at least had a chance to test a new, very clever little tiddly microphone, which seems to work very well when plugged through and working on my phone. So there's going to be some new options for going out and about and vlogging while walking. So that should be good fun. Anyway, all of that is a very long preamble. Owing to the fact I have been very held up and life's been a bit difficult, I thought I'd just keep this simple. So what I wanted to talk about was little pocketable pens. Now this is from Tom's studio. He's a chap who lives in Dorset and he's very keen on design. Next to it here, I have a Caveco. And you can see that the Caveco is just a little bit bigger, which makes this quite an astonishing little piece of kit. I was sent this by Tom Studio a year, year and a half ago, and it's just a simple pocket pen. But it's got several features that I really like. Now, the Caveco is a fantastic pen. I love them. I've got loads of sports. They're really they're convenient. They've got a really nice feel to them. They're just a brilliant little package. This is different. It's made out of solid aluminium. No clip, as you can see, but it's got, I think, eight sides. Yes, it's octagonal. So it won't roll off your desk. And it's a simple pack sort of design. You pull out the pen, like the Caveco, post it, 
and suddenly you've got a very large size pen indeed. Look at that compared to the Coveco. Big difference. Now what's really nice about this pen though, well there's several things that are really nice, things I really like. It's got a really good feel in the hand. It's got ever such faint ribs. Can't hear that, can you? The microphone's on me now. So it's got little ribs, which means that although it's metal, it feels quite solid and immovable in your hand. Even when you get quite warm, the little ridges going right the way round keep it very firmly in place. It's got a very nice nib. It is titanium, I believe. So it's not the most glorious colour, but it is nicely flexible. Now, it does occasionally have a bit of a problem with railroading. You know what that means? Some of you will, some of you won't. It means basically when you press too hard, sometimes the feed doesn't work fast enough to allow the ink to flow. But what it is, because it's titanium, as you can see, it gives you glorious line variation. Now this has been sitting in my pocket for the last couple of days. I haven't used it for several days. So the fact that there's no railroading is really good. There, I'm using Israel Zeblau, which is a lovely coloured ink. So, it feels good in the hand, it's got a very good length, it has an excellent nib. If I had a criticism, it's got a slight wobble, you can just see there. Because it's only held in with two O-rings, the back here, that's all that holds it in place. It does mean that there's a certain amount of flexibility, which you can probably see there. I've noticed it. I don't find it gives me any problems at all. What I do love about it, though, is that it will take a standard universal ink cartridge, but also, if you're naughty, you can fill all of that, all of that section there, with ink. And it takes a lot. And what's really nice is that Tom Studio don't just send you the pen, they actually sell, send with it a little eyedropper, a beautiful piece of workmanship that allows you to suck up ink, squirt it straight into the barrel of this pen, and it works supremely well. Now, last year I went cycling across um, a little bit of Brittany. Some friends and I went over to France and just cycled for 150 miles for a couple of days. It was wonderful fun. And this is the pen I took with me because I thought it's just going to be fun to use. And it was. And it didn't burp or misbehave or blot. Nothing at all. It was absolutely superbly well behaved the whole time. And I have to admit, I really like this green colour. I think they call it sage. And that basically is it. Simple little package, glorious bit of design. And it's using a certain amount of Israel's Zeblau. As you can see. This is a bottle that I had, and it has now coloured all of my house because I left the bottle on my standing desk and it slid off. And the cap smashed on the floor and sprayed ink 
over my chair, my dog, my floor, my carpet, my everything. Several books too, which was a bit embarrassing. They were supposed to be ready for sale, but um, they had to go back into storage. And I spoke to those lovely people at Peve Ackermann and bought a bottle of Delftsblau as well as another Israel Zeblau. And I told them about the accident and they very kindly sent me a couple of spare caps and a new sticker and all sorts. It was utterly above and beyond the call of duty, but I was very, very grateful. And I do love these bottles. There's the marble there. So when you've got ink, you just tip it up that way. The marble stops the ink from falling back in and you can fill your pen. And when you're done, you just rattle it slightly, move the marble and the ink comes back down into the main bottle. Just glorious. I love these things. And now that's it for me. I'm going to edit this. I'm going to put it up tomorrow. My apologies for the fact that it's been done at very short notice, but this year is one of those years where there's just too much to be done for me to be able to spend too much time planning and doing videos properly. Next week, I promise I will be more on the ball. But that for this week is all. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you get a chance, if you hit the like button, it'll make staying up till one o'clock in the morning or so just a bit more worthwhile. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. If you want to hit the like, you can join the Patreon. You can go and do whatever you want or even buy me a coffee. Anything that's gratefully received. But right now, I'm going to leave you in peace. Take care.